And after that, you ended up jumping over to WCW, which was just starting to pick up some steam. How did you end up signing with WCW? Who did you contact there? Yeah, um, I I contacted uh, Arn at the time, and uh, you know Arn and I were best friends. So I I called up Arn. And I said, Hey Arn, do you think you can, uh, you know, get me a a chance, you know, a meeting with uh, Eric Bischoff or somebody? And he said, Yeah, definitely. So ended up being where he gave me the number and then I, I called up Eric Bischoff and uh, I, I got a meeting with Eric. So we go in his office and I'm sitting down with Eric and Eric knew who I was and everything. And, and uh, John Nord and I were kind of tagging up. Um, we sold cars at the same car lot and then we were tagging up on small shows around Minnesota and Wisconsin and everything, just having a good time. So we went into, um, I had the meeting with Eric and John had the meeting with Eric. And I said, John, whatever you do, do not take less than like $200,000. And I'm going to do the same thing. So, so I go in with Eric and, uh, I said to Eric, I, I go, uh, Eric, I'd like to come in, me and John Nord, and uh, we want to be a tag team here. And he says, yeah. He says, I really don't want you to be a tag team. He says, uh, I'd love to have you, but I don't know what I would pay you. He says, do you know what you want to get paid? And I said, yeah, I want to, I want to be paid uh, a few million dollars, and I think I'm worth it. And he starts laughing. He goes, well, how can I justify that? And I said, well, well, why don't you just bring me in the territory? I said, I'll start training like a son of a gun. I'll be the toughest son of a gun there is. And I said, I'll beat everybody in 30 seconds. I'll beat Hulk Hogan. I'll be, I'll beat everybody and I'll be the top guy. And then I'll be worth those millions. Instead of paying me 20 million, just pay me 10 million. And then you just save 10 million. And then you got your top guy. And he laughed. He goes, you know, that was a great answer. He says, but that ain't going to happen. And I says, well, what's your thought? He says, well, how about I pay $175,000 and you'll, you'll just do TVs and, and hardly work. I said, you know, Eric, I said, that's a great deal. But I said, I'm, I, am I going to be partners with John? He goes, no, I, you won't be partners with John. So I says, well, you know what? That's a pretty good deal. Um, I said, I'll talk to John and I'm going to take that deal. So I talked to John. I told him that you're kidding me. He says, you, he says, I talked to him and I'm not making that much money. And he says, well, what's, what's the deal? And, and he says, yeah, I think I'm making like 125 or something. And I says, yeah, but I asked for 20 million. And then I settled for 10 million. I got 175 and we laughed and Eric was a great guy. So that's, that's how I, I started my job there. You didn't start as the blacktop bully. I guess you started under your real name. Was that the plan all along to evolve into the blacktop bully character? Or did they kind of just throw you out there with no plans at first? Um, just They just got me the job. And I had a, a job uh, just to do some TVs and and try to figure out what to do with me. And then, um, and at that time, I don't know who the booker was. Um, I can't remember what it was, but then Rick Flair became the booker and Rick says, yeah, we got to, we got to think of some kind of, uh, an angle for you. And he says, get with Arn. And, uh, he says, try to come up with something. He says, maybe be a truck driver or, or something like that. So, um, I called up Arn. I said, Arn, we need to have a meeting. And he goes, what do you mean we got to have a meeting? I said, we need to have a meeting, uh, drinking a couple of beers and you got to come up with a gimmick for me. And he says, okay, let's meet over at Bobby Eaton's garage. So Arn, Bobby Eaton and myself, we were in Bobby Eaton's garage and we we're drinking beers and, you know, Arn always has his glasses up like this. And whenever he gets real serious, his glasses kind of come down like this and he looks at you like this. So, his glasses are up like this and we're laughing, trying to come up with all these gimmicks. And all of a sudden 
it gets real quiet and Arn goes like this, puts his glasses down and he looks like this and he goes, you're the black top bully. You're the meanest, nastiest truck driver on the road ever. You're the black top bully. And I looked at Arn and I go, Arn, that's the greatest name of all time. I said, I can be that guy. So I called up Rick and I said, Arn, of course, came up with the gimmick. He goes, I'm the blacktop bully. He says, that's it. So I became the blacktop bully. Arn came up with the gimmick. And then we were trying to figure out what to do with the gimmick. So I said, well, I think I need to start a feud with uh, Ricky Steamboat or uh, Dustin Rhodes was kind of new in the territory. And I said, I've worked with Dustin before. So they said, yeah, you're going to be a fan that you're going to end up just arguing, being a loud mouth at Ricky Steamboat and with um, Dustin Rhodes. So you, you, you stand, you know, you, you don't even come in the dressing room or anything. You get a ticket like everybody else. You put in your fan. You got the front row seat. When those guys come, you just raise hell with these guys and don't make it look like you're a wrestler or anything. And, and, you know, sit down when the guard, when the security guard tells you to sit down. So that's kind of how the whole thing started. And then I ended up going to jail and I was in one of the Atlanta jails and it was brutal. And I was in there with the cup and everything. And then that's when Colonel Parker came and bailed me out of jail. And I got together with Haku and, you know, it was, uh, that's kind of how the whole blacktop bully started. Yeah, it was a great character. I really liked it. And I didn't know it was you at the time. I didn't realize it was Smash or Repo Man. I thought it was a new character. Oh, you didn't know? No, I was young. I was it was before the internet. So it was a well, great I'll character. You, that, that gimmick, yeah, that gimmick could have went a long ways. Um and they were building it up just perfect and everything. And, and you know, I, I, I had, uh, you know, tagged up with different people and worked against Sting and all. It, it was just a fun gimmick. And I felt very comfortable with it. And then it ended up being where we ended up having uh, uh, Dustin and I. We had feuds all over. And it ended up being where we had the truck match. And at that time, it was... Um, Mike Graham was the one who was uh, my agent and he put together the whole match. Mike Graham came up with the truck match and uh, it ended up being just a huge thing. And it was at an uncensored match and um, we ended up having a match in a semi truck with a cage around it. And it had, cow manure in there it had pitchforks it had hay it had everything and we ended up when we got in this truck we went on like a 60 mile path around atlanta and there was helicopters with cameras trucks with cameras i mean this was a huge huge thing and it was going on during the uncensored match so i thought this was kind of the highlight of my career um and i was going to win this match so then I could go on and I'm still the blacktop bully and I could wrestle steamboat and I could, you know, keep going on. So it ended up being, um, when it was all done, uh, the cameras were off everything. I hugged Dustin. I said, Dustin, thank you. That was a lot of fun. It was huge. Thank you. I was blood from head to toe, my arms, everything. And I had to drive back from Atlanta. I was living in Charlotte. So I had all these, you know, just coming out of the truck. I had dirty pants, dirty, you know, manure, smell. It was terrible. I ended up driving back, got home. I was all beat up. Uh, got a couple hours of sleep. The phone rings. It's Eric Bischoff. Eric, he says, Barry, he says, what a match you had last night. I said, oh, thank you. I said, it, it really felt good. I said, Dustin thought it felt good and everything. He goes, I got some good news and some bad news for you. I said, Oh, really? What's the good news? He says, hell of a match. Hell of a match. He says, bad news? He says, you're fired. 
I said, I'm fired. I said, I've never heard of anybody getting fired over having a hell of a match. He says, yeah. He says, the tower people. He says, we weren't supposed to have any blood on that un uncensored match. And I says, well, you know, and I didn't want to stooge off Mike Graham because he told us to get blood. And actually, I got blood the hard way. I hit the cage, split the side of my head open. And my arms, there was, uh, you know, like uh, chicken wire in there. And I was cut, cut, my arms were all cut up from the chicken wire. So really, I, I didn't bleed because I bled. I bled because it, it happened. So Eric says, please, Barry. He says, just, uh, just uh, you know, take the firing. He says, take off a little while and I'll bring you back. And. I said, Eric, I said, we're friends. You're a Minnesota guy, too. I said, I definitely would do that. I said, have you talked to Dustin yet? He goes, no, I'm calling him right now. He says, I'm firing Mike Graham, and I'm firing Dustin, too. So I said, holy cow, who in the world gets fired over having a, a great match? So it ended up being where that was the end of uh, the deal. I ended up, I was living in Charlotte. I ended up moving back to Minnesota. and. Um, he called me back uh, about a half a year later, and he says, Barry, I promised you I was going to hire you back. I'm hiring you back. So the next contract I had was for $150,000, and I didn't even work. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.